welcome to the channel. I haven't been posting any videos for the last months and I would like to take it back. Uh, we have also stopped our bubble study group, so I hope to pick it up again in October. What I'd like to talk to you about is demon possession. And before getting into it, I'd like to say that um, there has been some studies regarding this phenomenon at the time of Jesus. And one of the things that they have come out to understand is that when there is a political oppression or, or um, violent oppression uh, outside the home, men are usually the ones who, who show demon possession. Well, if there's oppression on a domestic level within the home, it's women, it's the women who, who, who show those signs. And I can remember when I was uh, 13, uh, in my youth group, um, there was this girl who was also 13, and she was very thin. And one day, one of our youth group meetings, she started um, showing uh, demon-possessed demon -possess, um, attitudes, I would say, or, or, or doing and saying things that were very weird, and started uh, hitting us. And the youth group leader, who was 25, he was a weightlifter, and he grabbed her, and he couldn't hold her. This very thin girl was able to break free from him and, and overpower him, which was very uh, amazing to see. But then we found out why she was demon-possessed, because her stepdad was abusing her. So those are the things that I like to point out. Uh, those, the, that's where the demons can come in. But I'd like to tell you about uh, chapter 8, verse 28 to um, 34 in the book of Matthew. And, and this is a parallel text. You find it also in Mark 5, 1 to 17, and also in Luke chapter 8, verse 26 to 37. And I'm taking um, Matthew's um, uh, passage because it's the shortest one. Because it's, it's, it has uh, the similarities from the other two. And we're going to see right away. So, 828 says, uh, fight, uh, yeah, 828 says, when he arrived at the other side of the region of the Gadarenes. And this is where we start seeing the difference uh, between, the, between the, um, the different passages that uh, narrate uh, this uh, event. Because in chapter 5, uh, in chapter 5, it says something else. Gatherings in the NIV, I'm reading the NIV, gatherings in, in 8.28, they we find in, in uh, Mark 5, we find they went across the lake to the region of the Gerizines, Gerizines. So you find something else there. And then if you go all the way to, Mark, to Luke 8, you're going to find yet something else all, all over. Um... Then sail, they, they sail, uh, 8, 826 of Luke, they sail to the region of the Gerizines. So we have three things here. We have gatherings in the first one. And then we have um, Gerizines in the second one. And Gerizines also in, 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 uh, in Luke. So both Mark and Luke talk about the same town, while... Matthew talks about the gatherings. And why is that? Why is this happening? And what, the other thing is that when you read Matthew, you see two demon-possessed people, persons, while in Mark and in Luke, you see only one. But let me, let, let me point out about the, the, this place, the, the, either the gatherings, gerserines, or gerasines. There are three types uh, of, of towns, let's say, or name, name of towns that are mentioned in different manuscripts. And why is that? Because as you can see on your, um, on your screen, there's no, um, the, 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 there's no consensus where this town is. Some people believe that this town is a bit far from the lake, therefore the pigs have to uh, run for three or four miles to get to the lake. 
Some people think it's right beside the lake. So, so, so that's why we have this uh, discrepancy, which, yes, uh, if we come down to the atomic level to, to see these things, um, they cause problems for some people, but in my case, it doesn't because I don't want to talk about it today. But the main thing is, uh, but uh, the, there's, there's some, um, the main thing is that the pigs went down and we're going to see why that's the main thing. But also, um, let's keep on reading the text. When he arrived the other side of the region of the Garadines, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. And this is the thing, some distance. So we don't know how, I don't know how big the herd is. Um, I, I don't know how um, uh, the size of the herd. But they could see it at some distance. The demons begged Jesus if you drive us out, send us into the herds of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. So this is the first time um, that we come, when we read the Bible, we come to this passage. But, the, but if we read Mark 5, we get more detail. Now, now that you know the story, now let's get into more detail. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man, now it's a man, not two, yeah. And remember, Luke follows uh, Mark on, on this one. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, again, from a distance, take, uh, take this into account, from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with, um, with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, your impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion. And this is important for what I want to put, uh, the point I want to make. My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send him out of the area. Remember when Jesus said that the spirit, when he goes out, goes to the desert? He doesn't want to go out of this area. Why? Why? Uh, uh, there, there's lots of talk of spiritual warfare. Um, we see that in the Old Testament, in, um, when, when Michael um, was going to Daniel, there was a spiritual entity that uh, opposed him. We see in the book of, uh, in, the, in the letters of Paul in Colossians and Ephesians, that there's spiritual powers. So, that, that spiritual powers that are localized. So, all these things, uh, I think, we have to take into account. Well, uh, my name is Legion, he replied, well, a large, uh, a, uh, uh, and he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. So, in the, near, in the nearby hillside, so it's not right next to them, like sometimes we kind of think of. No, it's, it's quite far. Uh, some distance, um, uh, Matthew says, and let's see what Luke says. Luke says, um, Luke says, um, let's see, what is your name, Legion? A large share of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. So it follows, it follows, um, it follows Mark. The demons sent, uh, the demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. This, the herd, about 2,000 in number. So yeah, so, so, so see, so he gives us, uh, he gives us a number here, uh, 2,000 number rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. So, uh, and let's see, let's see how, how, how Luke says this. Le, uh, Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go to the abyss. So he gives you more information. 
not outside the area, but not into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the, there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the men, they went into the pigs, and, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. So, this is very important to understand. Um, legion. Remember what Jesus, when he was at Gethsemane, what he said, that he could, he could ask the Father for legions, for 12 legions, but he didn't. He didn't do it. And legions, uh, some people think it's four, some people think it's 5,000 soldiers. Let's take it that there are four. Now we call it divisions in, in the army today. So a, a legion will be 4,000 soldiers. So these legions were made up of, um, of many, many, many soldiers in sections. There was a legion, the 10th legion, um, that was uh, taking care of uh, or was subduing, was oppressing Judea and this area of the Decapolis, or the Decapolis, or the 10 cities. So this Roman 10th legion had in itself sections who had different banners. Um, one of them, one of the banners was a, um, a, a, a ship that, um, that represented that they went from place to place. The other banner was, was the banner of an ox that you can see also on your screen. But the other one, of, of, or a bull, uh, depending how you, 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 you want to interpret the, the painting. But the other one was the, was the one that really interests us. It was the manner of a pig. So this particular section of the Ten Legion is believed to have been around Judea and this area of the Lake of, of Galilee. And they were oppressing, oppressing the people there. So, Jesus sends these demons into the pigs. And what happens to the pigs? The pigs are drowned. So, this is what we're learning from, from, um, from a point of view that, uh, of somebody who's living in, in this area. We, have, we are being oppressed by a legion, by a legion, because there are many. But Jesus has power over these oppressors. And he can cast them out. So, this is what we're the, from a Palestinian, from a, a first century, from a first century Judean person living there. That's how they would see it. That's how they would read it. And this is very explosive because even in the book of Mark, in the book of Mark, chapter one, when you read the first verse, in the beginning of the good news. The beginning of the good news of, uh, about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. The beginning of the good news of the gospel, evangelion, about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. So, on your screen, you're seeing an inscription, the Pyrrhon inscription, that talks about how Augustus, who was Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar's adopted son, how he had brought peace into the world by his gospel. And all the emperors after him, they were called son of God. Because emperors were um, made gods when they die. Although Caligula wanted to be made God within his lifetime. And I'm not sure in Domitian as well. In the, in, the night, in the 90s of the first century. So, by reading this, a Roman citizen would say, in the beginning of the good news of, of, of Augustus Caesar, no, no, the, the good news of, about Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh, so, so this is the good news of Jesus, who are, he was in Judea, and you're saying that he's the Son of God, not Caesar? And we see this again 
at the at, at the end of the gospel, when Jesus when Jesus died, I'm talking about chapter 15, verse 37. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Th verse 38. The curtain of the temple was torn into two, from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. So this centurion who represented the empire, the Roman empire, at the end, he recognized that Jesus was the son of God, not Caesar. The centurion had sworn allegiance to Caesar as the son of God. And then we see at the end of the gospel, this representative of, of the Roman Empire recognizing that Jesus is the Son of God. Let me tell you one last thing. Remember when Jesus says, My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives it? Well, during Roman times, there was such a thing as Pax Romana, Roman peace, which meant that whenever Rome went, they would conquer people, they would, they would put order because even today we our laws from from uh, today we we live in the West. Our laws are based on the Roman Empire laws. And what happens is that they brought all these things. Yet they brought oppression, taxation. People were not free in their own land. But they claimed that they brought peace. That's why Jesus says. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives it. So Jesus knew about Pax Romana. But Jesus gives a better peace. So you see all this, all, all this um, clash of, of ideologies. And also of, of, uh, of political ideas. It's quite interesting. So in this century, uh, early in this century, uh, after 9-11... Uh, what happened, the two towers came down in, in New York. Um, the United States was given the world, uh, according to George Bush Jr., Jr. Uh, he, uh, the gift from, the, from America, from the United States, to the world was democracy and freedom. Doesn't, it, that, doesn't that sound like Pax Romana? That's why this was, this was called Pax Americana. American peace. It was called Pax Americana, so people would uh, so people would uh, understand that uh, that they were um, they were trying to to sell sell people this peace, and you know that that created about a million Iraqis to die. So the empires still claim that they have uh, that they bring peace, but but they don't. They don't. They usually bring death, oppression. Well, this is, this is a way of, of understanding these passages, uh, the demon possessed uh, passage, passage, at least from chapter 8, chapter 5, and chapter 8, uh, chapter 8 of Matthew, chapter 5 of, of Mark, and chapter 8 of Luke. This is a way of understanding what Jesus is doing, what Jesus is trying to, to point across, that he is in control of the legions that are oppressing in Judea. And he's going to win. Not the way they think he's going to win, but he will eventually overcome them. If you like this, um, this Bible study, I, um, I please uh, ask you to give me a like, subscribe to this channel, and share this video. I also would like to invite you to uh, leave your comment if you, if, if, if you think that I, what I said is wrong or if you think what I said is right, or maybe you want to add something else that I had forgotten. So uh, thank you for watching this and I hope to see you next time.